Good morning, it's Lisa with Lisa Heal Yourself. And today we're gonna to talk about what's going on in the world in a way that won't get us censored. And also we'll talk about what the solutions are. So I'm not saying that my position is right or my insights are right, but I do believe that my insights are valuable. So I think everyone's are. And so I think it's important. And the number one thing that we need, we need to remember here is that censorship is, is not the way forward. Learning, learn better and do better is the way that we evolve, right? Spiritually, mentally, uh, physically, all of it. We make mistakes along the way. We have information that's not correct along the way. We make mistakes. We do things that aren't correct and we learn and grow. And when things affect us personally, we often take them more seriously. We dive into more information and we make choices uh, to improve our life when we notice them failing in certain areas, whether it's relationships or spirit spirituality or um, with our careers or in medicine or uh, with politics or our food choices or whatever. So often we don't, we just kind of go along with the status quo until something affects us personally. This is what I find. And when something does affect us personally, at that point, we learn more, we research more, and we take all this information, we learn, we grow, we make new choices, we learn, we grow, and we evolve as human beings. This is how progress happens. This is how we evolve. This is how we become better, smarter, kinder, happier, uh, more balanced, well-adjusted human beings. Sorry, down here, there's real pockets of wind. So I'm, I'm doing my best. So my video is coming from a perspective of somebody like me who has been, who has swung and lived on the extremes on many different issues, okay? Who lived in the middle and who also lived on an extreme and then swung to the other extreme. So I think it's valuable that we look and listen to this because I think it's all the same issue. The issues that we're having and struggling on in the world today with food, with um, abortion, with LBGTQ plus rights, with Republican and Democrats, with the vaccine versus non-vaccines, with all of it. It's the same debate playing out in a different way. It's the same discussion playing out in different areas of our life. And this is what I believe is the problem. Firstly, a lot of us as human beings have control issues, okay? We spend a lot of our life trying to be in control, stay in control, and control other people. We want, we want things to be the way we want them to be, okay? The problem is we're not always right. So we don't know everything. Every human being does not know everything. And every human being is not right about everything that they believe in. But we wanna control everything, including the world, our relationships, and all the people in it to be, think, and act like us. Well, one of the great dichotomies of all of this is that we have a hard enough time controlling ourselves and we will never control anyone else, okay? We will never control the people in our lives, even our children, our spouses, our closest relationships, okay? We should focus on ourselves. Why would we think that we can control others, the people closest to us, and people at large all over the world if we can't even control ourselves, right? How often have you wanted to make a decision but do something else? How often have you tried to do something but your subconscious programming of beliefs take over and you're not able to do it. Like this is why people have addictions. This is why people try to lose weight and can't. This is why people, you know, are unhealthy and try to get healthy and can't, right? We want to do something, we believe in something, but we can't often even control our own thoughts, our own beliefs, our own bodies, our own choices, our own decisions, our own, our own everything, right? So why would we think we have any chance at controlling other people or the world at large. So my biggest message here is to stop controlling, right? You can only control yourself. And even that we fail miserably at as human beings. But focusing inward, focusing on yourself, focusing on becoming the best human being that you can become, evolving, growing, learning, doing, changing yourself 
is the best thing that you can do to help the world at large. And oftentimes that means acknowledging that we're not always right. We don't always know everything. And we may believe one thing one time and believe something else at another time in our life, depending on our personal experiences and relationships and how we learn, grow and develop and evolve and grow beyond our limitations, our beliefs and things that we once believed and now we believe something different. So saying that, we need to leave everybody else alone. We need to mind our own business and we need to focus on ourselves, our own decisions, what we can control and what we can't control, what we can do and what we can't do. And that is the best way to help everyone. And that is the best way to live in a society and share in a society. It's the best way for your marriage. It's the best way for everything is to like, yes, you can say your opinion, but you, if you spend your whole relationship trying to control the other person, that relationship will fall apart, right? It's when we allow people to be who and what they are. We allow them to make mistakes. We allow them to express the way they express. We allow them to be the full, complete version of who they are and let their own experiences and beliefs and value systems guide them and hopefully make them into better human beings along their own personal evolution and their path of life. And the way that we do that is we put knowledge out into the world. We express, we talk, we put information out there because when people are ready for information, they come looking. So if somebody is really impacted in health, they'll come looking for health information. If they're really struggling with their diet, they'll go looking for diet information. If they're struggling with a decision on mental health, they'll go looking for mental health information. So not everybody's looking for all of it at once, but somebody is looking for some of it at any time. So the more information out there, the better because problems aren't one size fits all and not everybody has the solution to every problem or there wouldn't be these problems existing, right? So what resonates for somebody on how to treat anxiety or depression or mental health problems might not be the solution for the other person. So the more information, the better. So to say disinformation, misinformation and block certain, um, certain points of access to all the information is harming society, it's harming people, it's harming growth, it's harm, harming, it's harming personal growth, it's harming personal learning, it's, it's harming people to be able to be the best that they can be. Because people need access to all points of view on all topics so that they can match them up with their own values, beliefs, and personal experiences and come to the decision that resonates best for them, that helps them grow, evolve, and become better people as they journey through their own life and expand personally. So saying all that, let's talk about what's going on in the world. We have everybody wanting to force everybody to get vaccinated. We have all the people resisting um, that. We have people who are in mainstream medicine and we have people who are in natural healthcare and alternative medicine. We have vegans versus carnivores, right? We have we see people who want to eat all, all organic and have all organic farming and growing all over the world. And we see people who don't care about that and just want to eat what's in the grocery store and have access to cheap, cheaper food. We see people who are focused on climate change and people who are focused on industry and money. We have so many different things going on in the world and a lot of the times they are at odds. Now. Being myself once a mainstream dieter, just eating whatever I wanted, healthy food, but a little bit of everything. I went from somebody who was raw vegan, who wouldn't touch meat, who believed meat was bad, who, would, who wouldn't even eat vegetables or fruit or anything cooked and it's cooked. It had to be in its raw state. It had to be raw fruits and vegetables by the pounds, okay? And anything else was wrong. To somebody who went to another extreme, who was basically carnivore and who wouldn't eat any plants because plants were harming people. And only the meat was going to be the thing that would bring down inflammation and help the body heal itself. So you can see that there's a middle of the road way, there's an extreme way, there's one extreme side and another extreme side. And for somebody who's lived on 
the middle and both extremes, I can tell you just from food alone. Until food becomes an issue for you, like truly healing a life-threatening disease becomes something that's so important for you, you're not gonna jump on the bandwagon and do enough of the research necessary to throw out your personal beliefs, ideologies, and values that you grew up learning from your parents and find out what's actually truth. Find out what actually works for you. Learn enough so that you can make an educated decision that's not affected by past beliefs and ingrained ideologies, but is actually the best decision that you can make as you learn and evolve past those limited beliefs and actually find out what's working and what can heal you. And no one's gonna get there unless it's that important to them. So no one's going to evolve in an area until it affects them deeply and personally, and they have no other choice but to, to go so far down the rabbit hole where they're willing to try all extremes, to throw away all extremes, and to do everything in between in order to find out the answer. And even then, if you settle on an answer, what if you're wrong? And then you force the rest of the world to be like that. And you say, nope, the vegan diet, the raw vegan diet is the best diet in the world, that's it. And I'm gonna force everyone else to do that. What if you, what if you are wrong? Even if you go through a huge learning curve, even if you spend massive years doing it, and even if you heal your own condition that way, and you are wrong, people need animal products. Or vice versa. You convince everybody that the carnivore diet is the only way to go, and plants are bad, and that's it because of everything you've been through, all the learning you've been through, and the personal experience you have, but you're wrong. Is it appropriate to force or control everybody else in the world, or do they need to go through their own journeys, do their own learning, get their own experiences, and come to their own decisions? So what I'm saying is one of the problems in the world today is that we have people in power who are looking for full control. And when you have people who are limiting information and wanting to take control and impose really deep ideologies on people and beliefs and values and change people in fundamental ways, take away rights, this is what's harming society. It's like, mind your own business. Let every person have more individual freedom, more right to learn, more right to information, and right to express and become who they were meant to be on their own journey. Of course, we need some laws. We need to make sure that nothing's violent or criminal, harming another person physically or violently in the world. But other than that, do you wanna be the person who tells somebody that they can or can't eat meat or that they have to eat plant products or that they uh, must eat organic or that they must, they can never eat organic again, even if they choose to. They're gonna be forced to eat something that's sprayed or they're gonna be forced to eat meat if they don't wanna eat meat or they're gonna be forced to eat only vegan if they love meat. Do you wanna be the person who is responsible for that? Because there's people in the world right now who do, who do want that level of control for the entire world. And what if they're wrong? What if they're not evolved enough to be the all-knowing God and the all-knowing person who makes that decision for the rest of the world and humanity at large? It's the same thing for abortion, right? There, we have a lot of pro-life people out there, a lot of pro-choice people out there, right? And they're willing, you know, they're fighting, they're arguing for both sides. But really, when it comes down to it, do you really want to be the person to tell everybody what they can and cannot do with their own body. I mean, sure, you might be the type of person who prefers nobody to get an abortion, who believes in, in life and the cells that are growing and they're sacred inside a human body. And that may, be, say, that may be important to you. And you may be somebody who actually needs an abortion for a medical reason or because it just is, it, you're a victim of rape or incest. Do you wanna be the person to tell that person that they actually can't make their own decision for their own self as to whether they're gonna have this life or not growing inside them. So I think people need to give up a level of control for everyone else and start making decisions for themselves that align with their beliefs and values, right? Because somebody who's a staunch uh, pro-life supporter might actually come into a situation in their life where they actually need to have an abortion, okay? And that is how people 
change extremes where it has affected them personally and in a personal way that they hadn't seen that perspective from until right that moment. And that is how they might be somebody who needs an abortion, get one and realize that their stance was wrong. They evolve, they learn and they grow. Or oppositely, they may have, they may be somebody who's had an abortion for maybe a reason that wasn't that great. And later on in their life, they have a lot of emotional scars and trauma and they have to work through this. And they realize and they come to realize that that life was sacred and it was a part of God's plan, not their plan. And that, you know, they feel deep regret and they learn and grow and make new decisions based out of their own personal experiences. So I think if we all stop for a minute, we can realize that we can see both sides of any argument. All of us can see both sides of any argument. And all of us probably believe in some points on each side of any argument because that's what it means to be a human being. Now, there are people who are totally one way and totally the other way, but most of us fall in the middle somewhere and that's just how it is with life. Most of us, you know, most of us do fall in the middle. Most of us can see things from all sides. And the people who can't see things from both sides, the people who are extreme in one direction or the other, are usually people who have had an experience that is so dramatic and so personal that it has affected them so greatly that they can only see it from one side because they've been so personally affected by something. And when they see the truth of something because it's so personal to them, they share what they know. And we see this from people on all sides. And those types of stories, those types of anecdotes, those types of far extreme people who speak out on topics because it's affected them so personally are the stories that we all need to hear. They cause us to shift and grow and look at things from other points of view and other perspectives that we may never know unless something affects us that greatly. So these outliers on both sides are so important and so necessary. And even though the far right or the far left can seem extreme or scary, they have points of view that are important for all of us to look at and learn from so that we can help align those with our own personal beliefs, values, and experiences and get new perspectives that we may not have seen before. This helps us strengthen our own values and it helps us make decisions that teach us to grow and help us grow and evolve in ways that we might not and faster than in ways that if we, you know, have to have this personal experience for ourselves. So say somebody who's a, a victim of rape can teach us something and someone who's a victim of medical malpractice can teach us something and someone who has been injured by the vaccine and has a massive story and someone who's been saved by the vaccine and has a story can all teach us things that we, if we're open and if we listen and we're willing to listen, they can teach us things and help us learn and grow and evolve without having to be the one who was injured by the vaccine. It, it helps us open our mind to new perspectives, new ideas, and we can either take what people say and throw it away. I was like, this just doesn't align with me at all. Or it can help point us in new direction and new learning that we hadn't thought of until now. When it comes to Republicans and liberals, when it comes to abortion, non-abortion, when it comes to vaccine, non-vaccine, when it comes to somebody like me, who's very black and white as to whether you know, I believe in the mainstream healthcare model or the natural healthcare model. I'm very, very black and white on that. I was the other way at one point in my life. I believed in the mainstream way. I didn't want any voodoo natural healing, but I had a personal experience. I went through something that was life changing, life altering. I changed, I grew, I evolved. I learned things that no other human being should have to learn. And then I made new, I have new value systems now. And I have new things to share and teach. And people who are open to that might not have to go through what I went through in order to get to the same end point. Now, I would never wanna force my ideology on anyone either. I want people to have options for all medical care, right? From mainstream all the way to the most alternative and not have anybody block access to any of that information because you don't know where anybody is along their journey, along their own 
experiences in life or what they're dealing with and it may mean different things to different people and things that you think might be extreme or harmful may be exactly the thing that somebody else needs in order to save them. So it's not up for us to make these grand sweeping gestures and it's certainly not up for governments and non-elected officials worldwide and global elites to make decisions for things as sweeping and grand as healthcare, food, technology, access to information, censorship, like all of these big hot topics are when they're being made by people in positions of political power or people who are have a lot of money and they're elites, they're making them from their own personal experiences and their own value system. And not all of those are aligning with the greater good of humanity. And not all of those are, are going to help any particular individual. So to make sweeping and grand laws and, you know, taking control, forcing control, forcing compliance, um, taking away individual freedoms and rights for the greater good is what they call it. And forcing everybody into certain ideologies and certain ways of living because they think it's better for everyone is very, very, very dangerous. It's one of the most dangerous things and it leads to totalitarian societies. It leads to, ultimately it could lead to something as bad as genocides. And if we don't take people at face value in this world and stop living out of fear and believe that all people are good, all people are basically good and they have the right to make their own decisions and the right to choose what goes in their body. They have the right to choose whether they're vaccinated. They have the right to choose how they want to treat their cancer. They have the right to choose whether they treat it. They have the right to choose what they eat for dinner and lunch and breakfast. They have the right to choose everything. As long as they're not harming somebody else, as long as they're not forcing something else on someone else's throat or into someone else's body, this should be allowed and encouraged. If we believe that all people are genuinely good and they're all on their path to greater evolution, then yes, there's certain laws that need to be in place just to protect us from extreme violence or violence, you know, murder, rape. People who are violent and harm other people, stealing their goods. These types of laws that have been around since the beginning of time and since the beginning of every religion, including the Ten Commandments, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not covet the, the neighbor's wife. I mean, these things are as old as time. We don't need new sweeping laws all over the world to enforce heavy handedly what people's personal decisions are. Because what if you're wrong? What if you are wrong? What if you haven't considered something from a perspective that you never will until you're in a personal situation that affects you differently and deeply? We must, must, must learn from those outliers, from the extremists, from the people sharing stories, and we must come to a common middle ground, never be forced to one. As long as we protect individual rights and freedoms and human and civil liberties, then we protect all of us. We don't need to go to extremes in order to protect ourselves or the planet or the rest of the world. If we value each human life, each human freedom, each human individual freedoms and individual decisions and individual, individual civil and human rights, then we protect all of us. So that's why I say the vaccinated versus the non-vaccinated is the same debate as carnivore versus vegan. It's the same debate as Republican versus Democrat. It's the same debate as pro-life versus pro-choice. It's the same debate, whether it's pharmaceutical medication versus alternative and natural health care. It's the same debate, but access to information is the key and individual rights and freedoms and the ability to learn, grow, research, um, and make your own decisions is key, is key to all of us. That is why I'm against what's going on. I'm not against some of the things that people are doing and some of the um, values and ideologies that are happening, but I'm against people controlling other people to the extent that it affects your own individual freedom and civil liberties.
Now, some information I think is valid and some information is false. And I agree with some information and don't agree with some information, but I wouldn't want to censor any of the information. I'm disagreeing with the policies that censor, with the policies that control, with the policies that are meant to divide and scare and control and own, claims ownership over tries to own or control or manage something that was never meant to be controlled or owned or managed except by the individual or the organism itself. And so it's not that some of these ideas are terrible. It's not that some of these ideas aren't, aren't wonderful or great or whatever. That's not the point. The point isn't what's good or bad. The point is that we have access to all the information and each individual has the right to learn, grow, see, research, have access to all the information and decide and strengthen their own values for themselves as long as they're not doing harm to anyone else. And while basic laws are necessary to keep society functioning properly, extreme laws and overstepping laws are going to hurt all of us. So whenever we see government overreach, whenever we see extreme laws being put into place and we know that somebody could be wrong, we know that there's outliers on either side, we know that there's valid stories and valid anecdotes for arguments on both sides, that's where we really come into trouble. And so less control, less us trying to control others, less us being controlled, less control, less government control, less control in general. Um, so it's always better to control yourself, what you can choose, what you can think, what you can learn, what you can do. And if you can control yourself, you have a heck of a lot better chance on making an impact in the world or influencing somebody else for the better. Your individual freedoms matter. Your individual choices matter. What you do matters. You have so much power in your own ability to think learn, grow, rationalize. Your decisions, what you do on a personal level matters. So exercise your rights every chance you get and try to be better, do better, learn better, grow better, evolve into a better human being. Anybody, especially right now, governments, elites, anyone who is vying for world control and world domination, this is not the way. A single dominant person in power giving rules and dictating to other people, right? We have the left versus the right fighting. We've got Russia fighting Ukraine. We've got China and the US and organizations like the WEF and captured organizations um, and regulatory agencies and bodies. And they're, when they're getting policy coming down from elites, from people who have financial control and who stand to gain a lot of power and who want superpower control of the world, we have to be very careful. Everybody right now is fighting and trying to emerge as the world dominant superpower. They're vying for world control. It includes land. It includes resources. It includes data. And it includes human beings for resources, for information, and for actual, literal human beings. We are not for sale. So I hope this video has been helpful and useful. Give it a like, share it around, and I will see you in the next one.